No problem. Man is an isle of peace and tranquility, where for most of the year, the only drama is the landscape. But every September, there's an invasion by the international rally world. The Rothmans Manx Trophy, final round of the RAC Open Rally Championship, is unique in British rallying because the drivers are allowed to recce the route beforehand in preparation for the event. Okay, right. Just slight left. Slight right. Two. Long, fast K left. Titans. Caution. Tony Pond's co-driver is Mike right. Nicholson. This is a sort of a, a co-driver's shorthand, really, uh, which enables us to, um, having had Tony read it to me, I can then read it back to him on the event. Um, for example, that uh, FR stands for fast right. 70 is 70 yards. Obviously, that is a caution. To absolute right. But when the competition starts, the speeds are very different. 50. Twisty, 70. Caution, slight left crest to K right opens. Absolute left at wall. And absolute king. Absolute kings for 200. And fast right. Long, fast left. And flat right, 20. Caution, very fast left, medium right. Me and your men sit up. Warning, four men sit more here again on board, four men sit here. A new challenge for the regular stars is this year's first British appearance of the German World Rally champion Walter Rawl driving a Porsche 911. Out of the crowded town of Douglas on Friday morning, he's soon into his stride and immediately takes the lead. His superb car control puts him a few seconds ahead, but for those chasing him, the rally starts in dramatic fashion. Tony Pond is next on the road, but his Vauxhall Chevette is soon to be delayed by a high-speed spin. An early setback to his hopes of achieving a hat-trick on his favourite event. Finnish star Pentia Rickola driving his Rothmans Escort is the only man who can deny Scotsman Jimmy McRae the Open Championship. But to do so, he must win this event outright. However, his hopes are dashed on only the third special stage when he crashes out of the rally. Herr Eklund in the Toyota Celica is in the top ten, but it's been an unhappy year for the jovial Swede, and the big car is difficult to drive through the narrow lanes. So it's championship leader Jimmy McRae in the dealer Opel Team Ascona 400 who's pressurising the world champion, sliding his big car over the twisty Manx tarmac, determined to stay in touch. Early British hopes are raised further by an encouraging start from Russell Brooks in the Talbot Sunbeam, but engine problems are soon to put him out. Malcolm Wilson's escort now carries the Rothmans team flag. Ahead of both of these, though, is Teddy Cabey, the current British national champion, holding a splendid third place. Sadly, his challenge to the works teams will soon be over, when his car breaks under the strain. So it's Rawl still ahead, the German revelling in the challenge. How are you enjoying your first uh, rally on the Art of Man? That's nice, but my speed was too fast on the first three stages. I nearly went off five times. <laughs> if, if you make notes in a slow speed, you couldn't feel all this bump and jumps. And I was jumping like hell. <laughs> I think it's impossible to go always this speed during the race. Tony, what happened there on that first stage? A um, little bit of a spin. Oh dear. When you practice so slowly at 50 mile an hour, you don't find the bumps. We got series of three that you don't even notice going over 50. Hit them at 100 and you go off the top of one into the other and then play around. So you went around twice. Did you hit anything? No. Stayed in the road. Skill that was. Had my eyes closed the whole time. Jimmy, how were the first stages? Very good. I'm bad there over now. Uh, Fenty stop in the third one. So, why, why are you smiling, Jimmy? Because I think I've won the championship. 
with the title settled, McRae can now concentrate on chasing the leader. And Rawl knows it, because as the Porsche blasts down the narrow lanes at speeds of up to 135 miles an hour, he's still not getting away from the Scotsman. In fact, he's losing valuable seconds. And sharing fastest times is Pon Chivet, making up for that early delay and using every inch of the road in his attempt to catch up. Already it's obvious this event is going to be decided between these top three. Wilson moves up to four, while Eklund still finds the Toyota a handful in the narrow lanes. Breaking hard, Roger Clark, on only his second drive this year, but still a front runner. The race goes on up front, Rawl hurling the Porsche over the bumpy roads in a desperate effort to stay ahead. And chased relentlessly by McRae's Opal. There's absolutely no quarter being given. This is just the first day. Wilson trails in fourth, the old model Escort proving hard to drive and looking unstable through some of the faster corners, though the Cumbrian driver stays in control. Hon still catching up the leaders and now well ahead of some of the international entries the rally has attracted. Belgian Robert Drugmans in his Escort well up the order on his first visit here, while countryman Didi is just a few places behind in his Fiat 131. The Duckham's Toyota is now involved in this battle, with Eklund still keeping the car on the straight and narrow. Much more than can be said for Ireland's Donny Keating. The pace is too hot for some, and there is soon the long night ahead. What about tonight now, Tony? Who's going to have the advantage tonight, uh, if anything? I don't know. Maybe um, because we've done a lot more rallies on the Isle of Man, maybe we will. I don't know. It'll be interesting to see. Um, Walter's obviously... Um, with a world champion, he knows exactly what he's doing. Uh, he may find it a little more difficult at night when you have to rely on memory of even more than pace notes. The big question mark is in night time. Now during daytime, it's, it's not so bad for me. Even with, with my small practice, I can see what's going on. But maybe in night time, I slow down. And Rawl is slow. The four-second lead he held over McRae is soon cancelled. The Porsche is hampered by brake problems, and McRae puts on the pressure. As the night section gets underway, it's very clear that one man is going to stamp his authority on this rally. That man is Tony Pond. In a sensational display of sustained high-speed driving, the Chevette driver shoots into the lead. McRae is second. Is he about to catch him? I don't know. It, uh, if he goes as quick as he was last night, no. Not. He's settle for second now, settle for second in European points, I mean. Yeah. I don't tell, believe... Tell him that. Jimmy said he's going to settle for second. Do you believe him? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I've heard that one before. That's why he's asked you to tell me that. It's certainly not over yet, and as the leaders prepare for the final sections, both McRae and Pond know it well. It's a battle of nerves. As the last leg starts, Pond is determined to maintain his lead and keep the flying Scotsman at a respectable distance. As Rawl is going quickly in the daylight, the Porsche is back on the pace and threatening the two leaders. Wilson, though fourth, is now over eight minutes behind. And Malcolm Patrick Chevet moves up to sixth. Well, you've been going very quickly this morning. Yeah, now we've found support in the brake system. And the last stage, it was the first time that the brakes are really proper working, but now I lost my third gear. Pond brakes hard, but as he stays at the top, another war of nerves is going on. McRae's wife Margaret watches anxiously as she sees husband Jimmy urging the Opal on in chase. The gap is still only a matter of seconds. Still holds third despite his gearbox problem, while Sean Campbell's Opel Ascona acts as backup to McRae. But it's the new champion, McRae, who's keeping up the pressure because if Pond relaxes, he moves closer. So I, I must never give him confidence, you see. If he took five seconds on one stage, five seconds on the other, he immediately thinks, right, I've got him. So it's quite a psyching game, yeah, really. Yeah, if he takes five, then I have to do my damnness and make sure he doesn't take any in the next one. But time is running out for the challenge, and Pond shoots off down the final stage, still firmly in control. McRae has to settle for second and the championship in style. But for the world champion, heartbreak is around the corner. As he accelerates out of the bend, the engine revs rise, and the Porsche has broken a drive shaft. He cruises to a halt, a sad end to a memorable drive. Wilson inherits third. 
back in Douglas, Tony Pond and Mike Nicholson's Vauxhall Chevette drives onto the rostrum with a winning margin of just 37 seconds over Jimmy McRae's Opal after 300 miles of the fastest rallying in the world. It's a classic victory, the popular Englishman gaining his third win on the International Manx Rally and it's a fitting end to the 1981 Rothmans RAC Rally Championship.